In 2023, I traveled to the Indonesian island of Sumatra in search of its incredible biodiversity. While venturing into Sumatra's last remaining forests, I encountered an array of beautiful and bizarre species. Some are the most unique and mighty of their kind. While others are found nowhere else on Earth. And some are among the most endangered species that exist today. This is Sumatra. My first base is the Sumatra Eco Project Lodge in the lively village of Bukit Lawang. From here, I have easy access to the Losa National Park, where many of the species I'm searching for reside. The rainforest here is inhabited by an array of amazing primates, including long-tailed macaques, Thomas's leaf monkey, the white-handed gibbon, and of course, the Sumatran orangutan. But there's one in particular I'm especially intrigued by. And unlike other primates in Sumatra, this one is active after dark. My only chance of seeing this unique animal is to hike the forest at night. Although I often look for snakes at night, I always scan the canopy with my torch in hope of seeing nocturnal mammals. At ground level, however, this jungle stream is alive with invertebrates, including freshwater crabs, Erucius dimodiotypes, one of the most beautiful grasshoppers I've seen, amazing stick insects, many dazzling moths and their larvae, and a colony of Dinomermex gigas, one of the largest ant species in the world. A keeled, slug-eating snake lurks in the vegetation while hunting for its mollusk prey. Suddenly, I see intensely glowing eyes moving slowly through the canopy above me. My eyes widen and my heart skips a beat, as it can only be the animal I'm hoping to see. So I've just been on a hike to look for the Calliophis perfigatus. But instead we bumped into the only venomous primate, the slow lorus. There are currently nine recognised species of slow loris occurring throughout South and Southeast Asia. But that may change in future, as their taxonomy is under revision. We're just giving you a couple of minutes of darkness to see if it reappears. But it's been showing brilliantly. And we can see every single detail of this animal. And I never imagined in my entire life I would get this close to one. We sit and wait in the dark, hoping that the loris reveals itself further. I slowly aim my torch to the canopy again, and I can't quite believe what I'm seeing. Thank you. 
I'm careful not to shine my torch beam directly at the Loris, as they have very sensitive eyes designed for seeing in the dark. The Sumatran Slow Loris and the Sunda Slow Loris are both thought to occur in Sumatra. Both species look similar, and telling them apart in the field is difficult. However, it's thought that Lorises north of Lake Toba in the northern regions of Sumatra are likely to be Sumatran Slow Lorises. Based on this information, I think I'm looking at the Sumatran Slow Loris, but I'm not certain. I've now spent 15 minutes with this remarkable creature as it decides to move on and slowly vanish into the forest. It's time to go deeper into the Losa ecosystem and head northwest, passing the ominous Mount Cinnabung, an active volcano which last erupted just three years ago, decimating the nearby village. Arriving in the province of Aceh, I meet with local guide Safar, and we hike for one hour into this enchanting jungle to reach our camp. We find our camp and settle in for dinner. As usual, I'm eager to explore the forest after dark to find its inhabitants. Again, magnificent invertebrates cover every leaf and branch, including this massive mango hawk moth, the largest sphingid moth I've seen, and the tropical swallowtail moth, which is highly abundant in this forest. and other arthropods, such as this Anoplodesmus millipede. This roosting scarlet trogon was a pleasant surprise. It's one of the most beautiful birds in the area. Later into the night, I'm absolutely thrilled to come across the Sumatran palm viper, a venomous snake which is only found in Sumatra. And then, as I thought tonight couldn't get any better, on the way back to camp, I spot familiar glowing eyes in the understory. It's not just one, but two slow lorises. I can't believe my luck. What an incredible sight. As I mentioned previously, despite their charming appearance, Lorises are in fact venomous, a unique trait among primates. Close to the elbow on each forearm, a specialised gland produces a substance when the loris feels threatened. The loris combines this substance with its saliva, creating a toxin which is delivered through a venomous bite. 
They use this venom as a weapon during territorial disputes among one another, or as a defense against predators. The venom is also quite potent to humans, as biologist George Madani found out the hard way in 2012. He suffered severe anaphylaxis after being bitten, but thankfully he recovered. Bites inflicted on humans are very rare, and mostly occur when people are working closely with these animals. Sadly, the cute appearance of the slow loris is its biggest downfall, apart from habitat loss. Thousands are taken from the wild every year for the illegal pet trade. It's often dubbed as the most trafficked primate in Sumatra. This has led to viral videos online of lorises adopting a stance with arms raised above their head while being harassed by the illegal owner. To a novice, this would seem like a comical video, but it is in fact a scared animal ready to access those specialized glands on its arms to deliver a venomous bite. That's if its teeth have not been brutally removed. The future of Sumatra's endangered slow lorises is uncertain, and it was a privilege to see them living wild in the island's last remaining forests. I admire organizations such as the Sumatra Eco Project in all the hard work they do in saving slow lorises from extinction. Hello everybody, now this video is about, we got a call from a villager who found an injured slow loris behind his house and it makes us feel suspicious. Yup, once we arrived, we found a slow loris laid on the ground that probably has a problem with cataract or glaucoma. Gunung Leos of National Park and Sumeko will always be ready for this kind of situation. We always ready. So we made a quick decision to evacuate it. Definitely it needs help. So it's very important to give a serious response. Especially it was reported by the local community from Batukata Ecotourism. It's very sad to see her condition, especially with this kind of problem, we have no enough knowledge. So we decided to bring her to the veterinary, belongs to the wildlife authority. It's part of the government. She is still very active, but she has a serious problem with her eyes. So that's all what we could do. Hopefully they could do something. Hello everyone, it's getting interesting now. Yesterday two young guys came and hand over two slow lovers, mother and son. They are beautiful. Slow lorries in Sumatra face numerous threats, including illegal pet trade, habitat loss, and the crazy stupid thing is for black magic. Yeah, that's the reality. And as long as the Leuzo National Park and Sumiko remain access, we gotta confront them all. We gotta confront the illegal possession, illegal wildlife trafficking, poaching activities. We gotta confront them all. I promise that. The protection to the biodiversity of Gunung Lesur National Park is non-negotiable because to make a living through ecotourism inside the Leuzo. Mom has climbed the tree. All right, take care, read more, goodbye. 
Have a good life. Oh, nice. Yeah, thank you.